most important thing is probably communication with the student. I walked in and they sort of introduced me to the class. We kind of had a conversation about what we expect from each other. I like to, and my teacher liked to highlight like things as we go on. We would highlight it for the first week and the second week. But also picking up in the lessons actual evidence, so saying, oh, that lesson, um, this didn't go so well. But then the next lesson saying, this thing that didn't go well last time, you managed to do it this time. She gave me a lot of freedom um, and she'd constantly say to me, just go with it, just do what you want. This is your time to shine. You explore your new ideas. If you've got anything you want to try, just just do it. Just try it and you know see how it goes, and we can talk. We would speak about lessons before. We would speak about lessons after. Um, but they also involved me in a lot of the outer school activities. So meetings. Um, my mentor was doing a marking policy, and he really involved me in that. So it helped me progress as a teacher. Really, just basically, they talk to you a lot, and they always like welcome you into the class, introduce you, explain to the children who you are and your kind of role. Because it it really means a lot when a teacher says, "This is our new like our new teacher that will be teaching you," and they explain that you are to be listened to and that you're valued and valued member of staff, and it makes you feel. Especially, I've had teachers. When teachers tell you that they trust you teaching their class, that really means a lot to a student. Smiling and talkative and always there for you. Just someone who's approachable and you can go to them with anything. We'd speak all the time and even if, a, even if one of my lessons didn't go well, she'd be like, how do you think that went? And I was honest with her and I was able to, and she was honest with me. And she'd tell me where things went well and things went bad and what I needed to work on. And we'd go through targets and she'd tell you sort of she tell me everything that I needed to do and always got me that even if she was in the middle of doing something and I'd be like, um, where's where's this? Like where can I find this? She'd be like, Oh and she'd stop whatever she was doing and she'd run off to find what it was that I what I needed now. Being able to speak to them and not feeling that they're judging you. So for instance, um, there was times when I um, was unsure on my subject knowledge and I was in a lesson and I'd be like, oh no, like that a child would ask me a question. And I just knew that if I looked at him, he would support me. I didn't even have to say anything. He just knew and having that connection was really helpful. And he never, even after the lesson had finished, he'd never say, I can't believe you didn't know that. Or, you know, because I'm still, I'm still a student, I'm still learning. And he would say, that was a really good learning curve for you. How they always um, picked up, like, things that I needed, anything that I needed, that it would be, like, there for me. And, but she would always praise me as well. So it was like that mixture of saying, this is what I'm going to help you with. And she used to come and she'd say, just do this, do this and this, and then you'll be fine. Instead of just some kind of imaginary criteria, she was like, do this and then it'll go well. And so that was always really useful. Experiment with things. I think she liked that I was new and, um, and I was young, so I had all these ideas. And she wanted me to be able to go with it and try all these new creative things. And that's what she loved. And because so I don't think she felt like she, they were able to do it because obviously you've always got Ofsted and things on your back and but she loved that I was able to create and just roll with it and that's definitely what I take away with me. Because there's two minds, two creative minds and you both love teaching so you put two creative minds together and you can come up with a masterpiece. So there was times when I'd have an idea and then my mentor would have an idea, we'd put it together and it would, it would make a, a really good lesson. And I would just say, it's fun. It's, it's quite a scary place teaching on your own. Um, but if you have two people, it can be fun. Just really supportive and checking that the student's okay, knowing when to intervene and when to let the student just kind of go with their own way but also like if there's a problem just being aware of it and then always being there for them. We learn a lot because if they've been teaching for 
30 years or something, they've got sort of the same ideas, whereas you get this fresh burst of a new student who's got all these new ideas and they can bring so much to the classroom. And we've got all these new sort of techniques and creative things to bring in. I think it's definitely be beneficial to the children. A mistake is a learning curve and don't be embarrassed of it and just make sure that that is a reason for your next lesson to be even better. So evaluations and um, make sure that when you finish the lesson you write it up and when you do your next lesson you can cover that. So I would, I would take that and I would also take being, being part of a team. I really felt like being part of a team and I think in a school you need to be part of a team. Every teacher, every, every TA, even, this, even the, the receptionist, you all need to be a team for the school, the school to run.